the actual image and design of how that thing is expected to be structured and the uh, architectural design. So computer graphics has had a dramatic impact on the design process. Today, most mechanical and electronic designs are executed entirely on computer. Increasingly, architectural and product designs are also migrated to the computer. So you can have, you know, normally when you want to build your house, you call your architect, the architect will start uh, plotting and drawing graphs and everything. All those things and what you do on your computer now are this and you can have a, a, a 3D simulation of uh, the whole, uh, what's it called, the whole building, even without, even before you finish it, that's where computer-aided uh, computer design comes into play. And automated tools are also available that verify tolerances and design constraints uh, and for the CAD designs. So, the CAD design also play a key role in wide range of process from the design of tooling fixtures to manufacturing. Yeah, that's all about uh, computer-aided design. The next application of uh, computer graphics is uh, our graphical user interface these are gui um before this so this will uh, uh exam time table was released and we started the shenanigans of the trying to like uh, uh, arrange for our revision class and everything there is this uh, study group that we had which is the ui ux study group where we're actually learning the basis, the basis of design and understanding how to structure and conjure user interface alongside it some, some wonderful like uh, good practices of user experience so now computer graphics on its own is actually applicable in bringing building and developing graphical user interface that we can you know something on and uh, mouse operations and our pointer tools these are the graphical user interface so other than the graphical user interface, we also have the command line interface. And a typical command line interface looks like this. Um, it is the next time you write that you have to make a a typical command the command line interface looks like what you have here. This is our this this one is known as uh, command prompt. You have command prompt, you have power shell of Windows. So uh, the what is it called? The Linux OS, we have bash and so many other um what is it called command line interface like that. So the difference between your command line interface and your graphical user interface yeah. is that are you saying something? Please mute your, mute your device, please. So uh, the the difference, the major difference between the command line interface and the graphical user interface is that uh, the graphical user interface has, you know, when we are doing a uh, uh, human interaction with computer, we talked about WIMP interface, which is your windows, your menu, your icons, and uh, your pointers and pilot, uh, what's it called, components and elements. So now, you can, there are no buttons that you can click on. There are no, uh, what is it called? There are no menu that you can click on. There is no icon anywhere. All you have is just a big, big blank screen and a pointer that in the case where you are going to be, uh, you know, typing your input. But almost everything you can do, in, I say just almost everything you can do with your graphical user interface, you can also do with your command line interface. Because at the end of the day, what you are doing on the graphics user interface is that it is taking a, a the click of your button and executing it on the command line but that one is now done behind your back so it is not even in your presence like all you have to do is just interact with the command uh, what is it called with the graphics user interface and the whole designing of that graphics user interface is with the help and aid of the computer graphics aside from the designing the fact that it is even like shown and displayed to you on the screen it's also due to computer graphics. You rise right from your shot down to your app. There are the, 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 the operations that you can do on your command line is limit, limitless. In fact, there are some things that you might want to do. And as at that point, you will not have any other option other than no, to find it. But we are not here to talk about that one today, so we'll just proceed for that on uh, the application of uh, the graphics user graphics. <laughs> So 
another application is games. We all know what games mean. Please, can you guys hear me? All right. So, um, we all know what our games are, and uh, uh, computer graphics is very, very important in gaming because all your 3D graphics, all in fact, your 2D and your 3D graphics that are used in games, they are all the works of uh, computer graphics. In fact, there are so many games out there that all they do is that they will just go and design, design each uh, the different components of those games separately as graphics as uh, you know as graphics then those graphics are what will not just be moving from different uh, coordinates from different points on uh, the on the on the surface of your screen to another point by right? moving your cursor or controlling or using your screen uh, touch to probably swipe it from one location to the other so that's how important uh, the application of computer uh, graphics in the of game development then coming down to entertainment you are we are all aware that there are cartoons eh, that you know you will all find interesting to watch you know it's not just about being a kid that you watch a cartoon i can still tell you that i've watched them and they not because i'm a kid but because i enjoy the cartoon and i kind of like the way the animation was was wonderfully presented you know it was a blend of uh, of, of animation that was designed and uh, structured by the computer with uh, the the actual uh, you know uh human interaction and human parts that is being played in the movie so here yeah, uh, is the application of computer graphics in the entertainment industry. You know, sometimes most of the things that we see, that you see a, a car blow up, it's just the computer graphics uh, coming into play. And I'm sure my president here can tell us more about that as a media personnel. So uh, that's that about the application of uh, computer graphics. We have another question here says, briefly describe basic graphics uh, pipeline. Um, Uh, this briefly describe basic graphics rendering pipeline. So when we say rendering, rendering on its own, it means the conversion of a scene into an image. So probably you design a scene with your software. The process of breaking down your scene into an image for you to use is called rendering. So when your scene is still so is still in the soft copy in your software, which is not yet uh, rendered. So by the time you render it. You have a, a separate soft copy which is like a form of a, which is also a, a graphics for you know, those models are now like taken into an image. The graphic rendering pipeline is the conversion of model to scene and grouping into final steps. A particular scene is composed of models in three spaces. These three spaces being talked, being made reference to here, they are our X, Y, and Z axis for three-dimensional shapes and structure. And we also we also need to understand that models are composed of images which are supported by the rendering system. And models are entered by hand or created by a model. But nowadays, models are already generated. So uh, the image drawn of the computer on last time we Basically, we can see that uh, uh, the graphic rendering pipeline is the, is the conversion of your model into a scene broken into final steps. Why the whole rendering of the soul is taking that scene into an image. So that is a good description of the I can tell you that we've covered some basic uh, some uh, cogent parts in unit one. This is the beginning of this these are these questions are gotten from minutes two. Explain about the From those words, from that word display, you should know that this thing has to do with something that is kind of giving you an output. So it's even technology such as your CRTs, your LCDs, your CFCs, um, I don't know the full meaning of uh, that is this, but your, uh, your LCD is, uh, your CRT, your CRT means uh, uh, cathode ray tube. Your LCD means a different to start this So I don't know about that here. Oh yeah, that's it. Steam film transistor. The TFT is a steam film transistor. Your CRT is called your cathode ray tube. The 
is or else it is going to lose that. You look at the generations of, uh, like generations of second to the second to the third, but still down to the middle. The way those people are doing Then, furthermore, for a second, third generation, they were now relying on the system. What was it called? Smaller than a uh, cattle bridge. Uh, and this is where the TFT comes in. This is your team. And after that, this is where we have uh, uh, integrated sanctions. Integrated sanctions. I think that's, that's where this uh, LCD uh, liquid crystal is really coming Liquid crystal is actually, I think, it's uh, it's not common in a plasma television. I last room there is So basically, um, the display technologies, the our CRTs, our LCDs, our TFTs, our plasma TV, and our projectors. So and all these technologies, they operate on stimulating the. Just to hold your... It is a great honor for us. We are very proud the legends of the Laureus Academy have chosen us. After Bayern are the only... Good evening and thank you. Then what are the different ideas of the... Thank you for this important annual event and an honor to receive the Laureus Lifetime Achievement Award. I want to thank the Laureus World Sports Academy and I'd like to recognize the work the when we talk about youth and they are need uh, to uh, adjust the graphic, our body the body the these are the graphic devices that we have. We have, uh, we have a we have vector of graphic. Mm -hmm. I'm saying standard. The impact of each and every one of you who have stood up is so inspiring. That would be zero zero. Thank you. Please keep fighting. Uh, better graphic than the picture of the picture of Mixel. Which are which are supposed to be like picture uh, elements. This uh, for most of us that are familiar with the graphic design, you see that uh, most of the time, we need of measurement and uh, in the, the graphic set, uh, right? Really, it's actually the pixel. So uh, your your width to your height might actually be like uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, 300 pixel to 200 pixel. Then also also when it comes to uh, quality and uh, should I say the depth, there's something we call PPI, which is pixel per inch. Which uh, the pixel per inch is the total value of pixel that is in an inch of your image file that turns into a raster. That's a grid. This question, the next question says, why do we want to build a hierarchical data structure such as founding block It is not only our CIT 341 that has to do with data structure. It's even inside this computer graphic. Yeah, there is data structure and algorithm inside there. We have a we have a binary, we have a bounding box. So, I'm going to take a look at this. We also have a quad. So, uh, I'll just do the brief discussion. Guys, come and join me to eat this crypto. I'm trying to use that one to step down. We have a for our data structure, we have our four things. We have kids, we have GSP, species, which is also known as binary space. 
we also have our bounding volume area. The bounding volume is another resource room that's bounding box. So your so your your quad tree is like a tree. Take before the form of a tree, and I've explained what a tree looks like in our CS three point one class. So but for a quad tree, um, each internal node must always have four four children. So every node that is built there must always have four four. So we have quad tree. We also have octo tree. Octo tree. That's octo means eight, which means every every node, every node, every piece of tree will be split into eight, 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 eight quad tree. Can you use your quad tree for your for two days to this space partitioning? You can use, you also use it to like observe interactions with us. It's, it's, it's said to be a natural generalization of the one-dimensional search. No, if it is with our application, this got a three. That is a three bit. As a three dimensional. So by the time our K is equal to three. We actually have the representation of our KB tree. Looking like a binary tree. So it. 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 DSP trees are also binary trees. So the representation of this and the position of the trees is the same as the picture we have on the characteristics of the DSP trees is the binary trees. The nodes have one, zero, and two children. Order in which the nodes are with the source of math. So that's that about our okay. Okay, what do we use our DSP trees for? Do we Primary
So, um, the red is supposed to be like two part of the but on the color scheme, it's represented as one zero, one zero, one zero, one zero, so the order in which they appear, your red is first, so the one is the first, your green is just second, so the one is the last one, your blue is the last one, so the one is the last one, so that's how it is, so that's how it is. Then they said something about the gray areas. Gray areas are a portion of the issue. There will not be enough reflection with the way the light is. Please, the last one. Please, the last one. So, so, this is a particular box. This is this particular space. This is the one. The taste that is down here. No, this particular, this, no, this particular, this, this shape is so so down here. This place that is down here, there are gray areas. This place, this place, there are gray areas. These are gray areas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, pardon my haphazard. Uh, so that's, uh, so that's uh, our. For the Cyan Majesta, it's still the same color. The same color yeah. Yeah. Instead of you writing, instead of you writing, it's still the same color. Still the same color. Instead of you writing, the 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 R G B, the R G B is like this. Then, Well, 
know my days of the good defining and the only thing that I know of is that uh, uh, the, more you the more you increase the saturation of the color, the more pure the, the color as is. So, I can say that the uh, saturation increases on it, while I cannot really say in that what they are expecting of saturation because saturation is different from the other thing that and here yeah, they say that they uh, to show that the wave method is used. Oh, the only thing I can say is that the only thing I can say is that saturation increases color is higher the saturation is not pure. Where the energy? Where the energy from? Good light. Uh, let me have to share this thing again to draw you. Alright, so um, for our for our sample spectra for blue light, I will just draw something like this. Okay, this one, this this line below, I'm going to call it my. Okay, this one will be. Then, well, probably somewhere here. That's the wavelength. Let me manage my writing very, very cool. And here I have my R. Uh, RGB. So, uh, what I have going up now is RGB. So, the, the, the blue spectral light is going to.
what is the meaning of pre- what is the meaning of pre multiplied RGBA then to zero point zero zero point two five zero point two five. All right, let me try. All right, let me try and explain to what I understand. What is something to That means that means a particular form of transparency has been applied. Different shades of grey. Everything you see on grey on a grey scale image, they are just grey. Oh, it's just that some highlighter are lighter than others, while some are darker than others. All of them are just different shades of grey. Yeah, that's it. That's actually 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 that's actually
When we have a Cartesian coordinate, we have we have points on the plane. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just want to quickly drop uh, the link to. The link that I did to the message is the link to the PDF uh, uh, summary, uh, summary for Moodle. Moodle one. 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 Moodle a Cartesian point. You have something like this. So, this is your, so, this is your x axis, this is your y axis. Your Cartesian coordinate here on the 2D plane is just limited to just two points your mm-hmm. x and your y axis. So, whatever point you are going to do, this way. It's on. Yeah, it's going to be the negative side. Anything that comes to this side is also going to be the negative side. This is uh, what we are to us. This is the one we're going to do. So an example of a 2D structure that makes use of your, your, um, your simple illustration of, two, of a two-dimensional animation or two-dimensional graphics is just your, your square. So when you draw your square, all you are from drawing your square, or your rectangle is just Sorry about this place. Sorry about this place. That's just it. If you tell me, you know, you don't feel it. The boy who's going to make the video, 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 the boy who's going to make the So now, all you have yeah, it's just a 2D graphic. A 2D graphic in the, in the sense that all the points on this plane they are just on X and Y axis. It has no depth to it, so there is no form of uh, 
third dimension. So your third dimension has to come has to do with the depth of the graphics or the object that you are seeing. But it's just why so that makes it two dimensional this is dimension one dimension two this is dimension one dimension two so it is just basically two dimension but when you have something like a cube you have something like a cube that's something that looks like that's something that looks like let me even like try and see if I can draw it. Can I do that? Let me just draw the key. Oh Jesus, I made a mistake. Then I have this one. Then I have this one. Then I have this one. And this one. And this one and this one see, see this one is now more than x y and, and x and y axis it, it, it now has what is called a depth which is the z axis so the difference between your 2d and your 3d the major difference is that on your 3d you have the third axis which is known as the depth so as when you are drawing the play the graph for your 3d you are going to have something like x y and then z in this way, like this. this is not the slope, it's just the depth. Most of the time, it's actually drawn outside so that people don't mistake it to be the slope. It's drawn outside like this your x, oh, sorry, your y, your x, and your z. So it is drawn outside so that you don't mistake it to the slope. So the key is like dimension one, dimension two, and dimension three. So this this z dimension it determines the depth of your what's it called of your object so when this when that depth is included it gives your object some sort of a real life exposure as if you are seeing it as it is so if you stand in front in front of your in front of your uh, your television or oh, if television is actually if you stand in front of your refrigerator you might actually be looking at it like a, 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 a Refrigerator, when you are looking at it with this hope, it's like facing it directly without looking at the side. It's going to be in the shape of a, in a 2D shape that's on your X and Y axis. But when you now go to the side, you shift your, your focus to the side a little bit, and you see that ah, this thing has some depth at the back. So you are now going to have something that looks like this, then something that looks like this. Then probably your hand will see here. Yeah. 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 Like so, so if you compare this with this, 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 this one, you see that the difference is that this one is just Y axis, but this one, but this one, there is a, there is a, there is an axis, Y axis, there is an X axis, then there is a, there is a third dimension which goes like this, which is our Z. It tells about the depth of the particular object, so that's the major difference between the two. That is why, that 
is why when you look at uh, when you look at uh, when you look at uh, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Animations like uh, animations like uh, 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 probably sport uh, probably sport uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. You'll be tempted to think of it as a two D animation, but when you look at uh, uh, probably animations and cartoons like some Disney movies like Frozen. <laughs> You see, you see real 3D model of shapes and everything of humans and everything that has that has depth. You no, know, a 2D animation can just like bring up your human and something that looks like this. Oh, this is your human being in 2D. But your your 3D will now have depth. It will make sure that okay, this shoulder, this person has a shoulder. This shoulder has a texture. This texture has a movement. So those things are now involved in your 3D animation. So the the basic difference between your 2D and your 3D is that it has this additional dimension that is known as the X. So the X, the, the, the Y, the, the Y, the X, and Z axis. So it's actually for your height, the width, the width and, the, and the, depth. the depth. 